Hello and welcome to this episode of Superhero Ethics. Today we are going back to a childhood favorite of a lot of us, Willow, and talking about the TV show now that it is finished. It'll be myself, Ashley, Katie, and Mark, right after our commercial break that we have no control over. Welcome back. This is Matthew, your host. If any of you listened to the episode about the Willow movie we put up about six weeks ago, I've got the same crew back with me. First off is Ashley Coffin from the MCU cast fame. Ashley, how are we doing tonight? I'm great. I'm great. You know, Mm -hmm. just a good old Thursday. Glad to be talking about this show. Super, super excited. (laughs) Yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty, well, I would say we're going to have a wide range of opinions. I think we're actually fairly close in some of our opinions from, uh, um, we'll we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, Mark, uh, you're not as well known. You want to say a a bit about yourself as we we welcome you to the show? Hi, I'm Mark Arcusha. I'm a uh, actor, voice actor, um, podcaster, and old school Willow fan. Um, I mean, or Willow Willow fan from way back, I nice. should say. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> just come out and be like, like oh, I'm an old school Willow fan. I'm not like that. You're like who to yeah. go um, to about Willow? Any questions? You know? Yeah. I thank you. I've I've put You're a lot the of time. Maester. Of Willow. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When (laughs) everybody uh, else in high school was, was, you know, doing, like, talking to girls, I was focusing on a 10-year-old movie (laughs) at the time. (laughs) Where is Tara's lead? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. go. Yeah. 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 Uh, And Ms. Brennan, say hello and say a word about yourself. Um, Hello. I'm Katie Brennan. I am Supreme Leader Ash's uh, best friend (laughs) and (laughs) confidant. (laughs) <laughs> and it's true. I also am a podcaster, really uh, active in the uh, tabletop role playing world. I also, by day, am a strategic analytics consultant. And um, yeah, I'm into a lot of nerdy stuff and uh, also a way back Willow fan. Nice, nice. Yeah, and as I said before on the last episode, I'm also someone who fell in love with Willow as a child. I really loved it, but I didn't really keep up with it the way some other folks did. I probably watched it once or twice and then, but had really happy memories of it. Watched it again as an adult. All those happy memories came back and then uh, turned on the show. (laughs) And so let's start with uh, our thoughts about the show. Um, Mark, why don't we kick us off? We're going to start by letting each person kind of give a general overview. People can respond and comment a bit. Then we'll go to the next person. And then we can dive into some of the specific things from the, the show. Okay. All right. Um... So for me, generally speaking, there was things I liked about the show and things I didn't like about the show, which I guess is you could say that about anything. Um, but I, one thing that like kind of has stood out to me about this show is that it's it it's kind of disjointed um, mm-hmm. in in the Dungeons and Dragons slash tabletop role playing world. We have a thing called Session Zero, where everyone gets together and says like. Before the game starts, you know, before a campaign starts, you get together and you say like, okay, so what's, what's the tone of this game going to (laughs) be like, are we we going like the Witcher? Are we going like game, like like dark fantasy, like serious Mm -hmm. dark fantasy, or are we doing like slapstick comedy? (laughs) Right. Yeah. And you know. It just kind of feels like they did not have a session zero for this show. It feels like the kind of Dungeons and Dragons game where you come in and you're like, oh, what's your character? Oh, I'm a I'm a questing knight who is looking for my lost brother. And who are you? I'm a cowboy who hunts werewolves. Okay, who are you? I'm an astronaut who crashed. And it's just like it just doesn't feel like there's a like a through line in the show. Uh-huh. But you know, having said that, there was a lot of stuff I liked about the show. Nice. Uh, Katie. Okay. Um, (laughs) So I will say that I was able to enjoy the show. The the first few episodes, I was able to just have fun watching it. And I agree with Uh everything Mark said. Um, But, you know, I kind of had, I think it was the member berry effect, I guess, in the beginning with the nostalgia and seeing what they were going to do and the new characters. And um, I actually really enjoy some of the actors. Like, I, I'm mm-hmm. really, like, I really like the actress who played Kit. I like the guy who plays Borman. Um, really, like, also, he's, I think he's very sexy. Um, he kept doing so that, something with his voice that was yeah, driving me crazy the entire time. 
Uh, you know what? I like a rakish rogue. I really like a rakish rogue. And so mm-hmm. he kind of added that Mad Mardigan thing. Um, and so I had a I had a really good time through the first four episodes, even though there were some things I didn't like. Um, and then it kind of went down for me. I totally agree about the lack of arc. I think it's like what I loved so much about the Willow movie in the 80s was that it was this fun fantasy adventure movie. And also there was like a little love story in there. This was yeah. like love stories on overdrive set to a like a subtle backdrop of fantasy adventure, you know. It's just like they spent they paid their biggest writers to um write the love scenes, the one-on-one love scenes and then their like interns wrote the story plot and art. <laughs> like that's kind yeah. of how I feel about it. So it, it was disappointing I, 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 in a lot of ways. And then I th- I'm sure we'll get into this more, but sort of how they treated who Willow became and the relationship between him and Alora really bugged me. Just there was a lot of little things that I didn't like. And then there were some things that I did. Um, you know, it was it was a show. It was definitely a show that I watched. <laughs> that we, well, we watched that, that one episode yeah. together. <laughs> and That is true. It, it was eight episodes of television. <laughs> Eight. Uh, Ashley. <laughs> okay. How to articulate this. <laughs> Not every show is made for every person. And this show was 100% not made for me. And it came with the guys that it was, which is why I'm so hurt. Because <laughs> yeah. I thought it was going to be well. And the, the things that could have been good for it for me just got so overshadowed by everything else that was going on. For someone who's as picky about costumes and hair and dialogue as I am they were running around in jean jackets with zippers and everybody had highlights and I couldn't and the dialogue oh the just like hey new girl where are you at or all that like nobody would like can I have a little fantasy dialogue in my fantasy show here and Please. and the the jokes that would try to break up the like tense stuff nothing hit So it was like that episode I was watching with Katie. You would get like, you brought Christian Slater in. How could I not be like, oh my God, it's Christian Slater. Within two seconds, they did the, the, the trolls opened their mouths and started talking like, oh, hey, what's up? And I was like, right up. I'm going to flip this table. I am going to flip this table. I had to leave the room so many times during the show. Like I would just get up and walk out. Um, so if you liked it, I'm really sorry, but. Oh, God, I just it was a chore to get through this for me. The music, I, I, and the pre- music. Oh, my God. The music was there. We go. If they could, you had a score, a beautiful, per- perfect score laid in front of you that you could have used the entire time over and over again and tricked me that I loved what was going on because I love that I know. music. The yep. last episode, there was like one line from the original Willow theme. And I'm like, oh, oh here it, it is. Was. And then it was gone. That was gone. Was I like... have never been so disappointed to hear Dire Straits. It, like yeah. they, they, were, they were building something interesting at the very end with Graydon meeting the worm, who's this beautiful woman. And their slow reveal that she she has this huge army behind her. And I, I heard the first few bars of Money for Nothing, a song I know so well. And I was like, no, no, it, that, that, don't don't give that to me because I actually am being moved by this moment. And then the guitar riff. Which and you could, you know that song? It's like, wait, is this? And then it's like, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, no, 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 no. And then it was. Yeah. It it sucks because like that, dan, 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 the, the, the couple of few, first few notes are like kind of cool and like fit that moment really well. But then it's like, I got a job selling refrigerators <laughs> and microwaves and TVs. It's like, what the f- man? I was going to say, Ashley, I- I'm glad you saved it because I- the first thing I was going to say was it tells you something about how many bad things there were in a show from Ashley's perspective that Ashley, who loves talking about the scores of movies, didn't even make it out of bad 80s music. You know what? Was it was terrible play. play. Let's play some yeah. modern music at the end of every episode. But OK, here, yeah. let's just hear me out. Let's have a terrible cover of it. Yeah. <laughs> like coffee and, shop chick. <laughs> yeah. The last one I think was an original and I did like the cover of I'm on fire. So here, here's kind of my overall thoughts on it. And then we can break, start breaking it down. And I, I've had this experience with other things as well. Like I think there's a very good movie out there 
that has Sean Connery as a king. I love that And movie. Richard Gere as a knight. And they're both in love with the same mo- woman. I think if I just think about it in those terms, it is a wonderful movie. If I think about it as a King Arthur story, which, which the movie <laughs> First Night that. claims to be, I hate it. And I think like if this had been marketed to me as a Gen Z take on 80s fantasy that was going to be somewhat satire and somewhat poking fun at it and also have, I will, I will say, some of the best queer representation in fantasy genre that I've ever seen, I would be like, cool. Kind of like Ashley, this isn't for me, but I'm glad it exists. I had fun watching it, and I'm going to enjoy hearing young people talk about it. Because one thing I've done is I've been scouring kind of TikTok and Twitter and things like that, and there is a large number of people who absolutely love the show. And as far as I can tell, it's mostly <laughs> queer kids who are 25 and under. Um, but it 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 did not feel like Willow to me in the slightest. It felt like people who either, on some level, were kind of wanting to make fun of Willow or just didn't get Willow. And and again, like, it, you know, we all might sound like we're grumpy <laughs> old fogies on this, and that's fine. Um, and I think, I think in a couple of years, maybe, or a couple of months, I might watch it again and just divorce it from Willow in my head at all. And then I might enjoy it some more, even though a lot of parts are going to make me roll my eyes. Like, it's never going to be my favorite. But I kind of feel like if, if they had just made this, if they had just made it not connected to Willow at all, I would have liked it a lot more. And to that kind of disjointedness you were talking about, Mark, like, there's other projects that I've seen where the, the one that I the most mm. often comes to my mind for me is Fury Road, where it's the same people who made Mad Max and they wanted to tell it as a completely separate story, but then the studios were like, why don't we just make it a Mad, you know, Mad Max sequel? And so they kind of squeezed Mad Max into it, but he's not the focus of the story. I wonder if that happened here. I wonder if someone had a kind of like quirky, a little bit off the wall, silly music fantasy story they wanted to tell. And, you know, people got involved with it and were like, okay, but what if we make it a Willow story? What if like, hey, you know, uh, Warwick Davis wants to do this again? Like it. Because you're right, it just felt like four or five different set of writers doing totally different I tried. things. I tried. not even talking. You guys it. know from the chat, I was probably the most positive <laughs> one early on. I yeah. really tried. And I was going into it with the right attitude that, like, this is not for me. But, like, you can't get around bad story, bad plot. Like, I feel like, you know the scene where Kit gets, like, pummeled by that big boulder or whatever and gets knocked into the water? Mm-hmm. I feel like that was kind of like me watching the show because I'm like, okay, it has, I know there's some (laughs) problems, but like it has this and it has this and it has this. And then all of a sudden the trolls start talking and then that big boulder just knocked me down and I I never really recovered from that. (laughs) Oh, the trolls. The the trolls to me was one of the most like (laughs) fantasy. No. They could have even reasoned that away by saying the Chrome gave them right. intelligence and language. Like, how easy would yeah. that have been? <laughs> but they're like, nah, let's just not explain it. Uh, we're not going to give you a summary of the show. Wikipedia will have some of that. And it, there's a part of the problem, I thought, is that there's way too many twists and turns to really be able to fully summarize. But for people who have no idea what we're talking about here, the, our heroes get captured by trolls. We've seen this before. But they talk as though they're kind of like. Yeah. Low level Goombas yeah. and Sopranos. And they sound like David Cross. Kind of, but also mixed in with. Yeah, like, and it's just. There were so many things about the dialogue like that. And it's funny because I I, I like what you said, Katie, about the writing because, because it's all over TikTok. I've just watched so many different videos about that that beautiful scene of Jade confessing her love to Kit and, and the two of them getting so close to kissing, which thank God they finally did. And that was beautifully written. Like, it was wonderful. And then you also have the grand sorceress, the one who, like, is in, indebted to the worm, who's been our enemy since 20 years ago. She's in the middle of the fight. And she's something like, you know, take that bitch. They said it at like, the end, too. Just, yeah. I left, I left, I left the room. Yeah, it, like, he's eternal, bitch, or whatever it is. And I will say... You mentioned the like inclusion of these like different, you know, different, different gender and sexuality stereotypes or um, categories, which I really mm-hmm. like. And actually, Jade and Kit, I felt had the best chemistry of any of the romances. And I genuinely liked watching them wrestle around and make out. 
if you took that out of the show and made a different show, like Tears the lame. L word yeah. in you know, <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah, the, then the yes, I would watch that show. By, by, Not this, though. <laughs> oh, no. So I was just going to say something. Uh, by saying they had the best chemistry, do you mean that they had chemistry? <laughs> yes, they had the only chemistry, yes. <laughs> Yes. I mean, it was like, I said this to Ashley today, because I actually just finished the last episode today. And I was like, it is so infuriating that Graydon is in love with her among all these. It's like every single character has to be in love. Can't we have like the friendship story between Mad Mardigan and Willow is the most beautiful thing in the original. Mm -hmm. It like hands down for me. Mm -hmm. Why does it always have to be a love story? And it's just like, I mean... Mark, you already said, like, pick a lane, but then it's just like, there's no variety at all. Well, to double down on that, the whole point of Alora leaving to go on this quest is because she's so in love with Prince Eric. And then two days in, she's like, oh, maybe I'm going to flirt and mess this guy's head up completely. I'm like, what are we even doing here then? Where are we going? We know she's like, we know she's being faked out and he's possessed and she says, I won't marry you. But like, that's not him. No. He's yeah. possessed. So you're going to say like, I'm not into you anymore. You're creepy. Like that too. What yeah. The, like she just, what the yeah. I have problems with Alora Dannon. I think when that crone called her out at the end and called her a boop, uh, I was, it can go. Someone finally said it. Mm-hmm. Someone said it. <laughs> we're all yeah, thinking we were it. All thinking it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think that's super fair. And I, I did like the friendship between Kit and Alora, and I thought there was an interesting dynamic there of, you know, I'm I'm sad that my father seemed to always be choosing you, which was a little, like, I liked that point because it's sort of, I think she had some legitimate reasons for feeling bitter about that. So to have Willow also not choose his child over Alara was a little like, yeah. what is, okay, yeah. that's not one of the lessons of the movie, fair it enough. It was a little too abrupt for me. I would have liked their friendship to ease in a little bit more. Um, Nobody was yeah. nice to Willow Definitely. and they made Willow Definitely. like, I, I don't know. I was like, I would like to now know exactly what happened in the between years because it doesn't seem like it was very good. And Willow never became right. a sorcerer. Like what a what a letdown. Mm-hmm. But like, but also, is he I, I, they didn't really explain it. Because he's doing all this And by stuff. the way, Kaya died and we're not going to tell you what happened there. Oh, and where's the son? Anyway. Where's the little where's boy? The <laughs> yeah, like, come on. He went off to do something. Yeah, Willow never became a sorcerer, except he did. And he, but he also invented a flamethrower. And, and, um, yeah, where did he's that like, I'm not a sorcerer. I'm just lucky. I'm like, dude, then how did you kill all those guys? Yeah, you're time? like, I'm going to go yeah. kill these guys. <laughs> right. It doesn't well, how are you, how are you doing all this magic? Yeah. And how did you, like, the zippers? Yes, Ashley, thank you for saying that. I, Lost my mind. Alora Dennon. When, like, it was one thing. In the last two yes. episodes, when they were doing close-ups of her, she had a jean jacket on and a green knit turtleneck. And I was like, what is this? The Last of Us? The Walking Dead? What am I watching? It could be a scene from yeah. anything right now. They got all of their it costumes was... from Wish.com. And I am sorry if that's harsh, <laughs> but I just came off House of the Dragon. So you got to think of, like, Those costumes. costumes are good. It's so funny. I don't see that. I don't see costumes. Like, I just don't notice do any I. of it until Ashley tells me or, like, the hair. <laughs> because I'm just, like, into, like, the relationships and the dialogue and the plot and stuff. I just don't even notice when it. When Willow rode up, I go to everybody. I was like, did Willow see, this, just this... roll up in Oshkosh Bagosh overalls? <laughs> I don't notice it. I think, Katie, what you just said is so perfect, though, because what it like, I'm, I'm like you, all four of us are noticing different things about this show. And we're all finding things we don't Zippers find. were invented at like this, like after flight, <laughs> like after like it was like they they weren't used until like the 1900s. Like. Yeah, but that's yeah. also like Willow has a flamethrower and, and he like was doing it like a shotgun. Kapow, kapow. Yeah. <laughs> kapow. Yeah, like, where was that earlier, bud? He's got to save it. And, yeah, where? who was carrying that this whole time? Where did it come from? Where did it go? <laughs> and, like... It, it's funny because... This might open up a whole other can of worms that I'm not trying to go into, but I'm just going to make this illusion quickly and get a whole bunch of hate mail. As I was watching all the stuff with Willow, I was thinking about the conversations that happened a lot about The Last Jedi. And like how there's a lot of people who are like, oh, my God, Luke would never do that. How could you do this to Luke? And I was in my head, I was like, 
on the one hand, I now get where they're coming from, <laughs> even though I still think they're wrong, but also was like, wait, you think Luke had character assassination? What about my boy Willow? Willow had completely... I know, Sorsha was being all mean. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> well, and like the dynamic between him and Alora bothered me because it's like, on one hand, him turning into a cantankerous sorcerer is okay. But I think he needs to be very good if he's going to be like a like grumpy sorcerer because he, you know, young kids today, they just don't follow the guidelines, you know? <laughs> but it's right. not like that. And she's kind of a bitch to him and he's not very nurturing to her. And it's not very enjoyable to watch them progress. <laughs> and then all of a sudden yeah. she goes from being terrible to like super powerful. Yeah. And, and then I terrible just, to Kit, I, like the, the dynamic, it switched from her being horrible with Willow to her, not Kit. Um, what's Mad Mardigan's daughter? Jade? Wait. Jade? Jade. Kit. I, who's the Kit. redhead? Kit is Mad Mardigan's okay. daughter. Kit. No, that is Kit. Jade. Yeah. Jade. Anyway, Mad Mardigan's daughter. They were just horrible. And then she was just continuously mean to her for like two episodes. And I'm like, I can't wait for this crone to take her out. I just can't yeah. wait for it. Yeah. <laughs> I think the show helped me actually realize one thing I really liked about the movie, which is that in general, I don't like chosen one plots because I think they're a little bit boring. You don't really understand why is it that this character as opposed to everyone else is like the great one and so worthy and all this. And the movie of Willow actually kind of subverts the chosen one idea because in the movie, all they are doing is protecting her, protecting her potential right. for the future. Or the idea that she could be this tool to be used. But in the end, like, the baby doesn't really do much. And when Willow, like, saves the day with the great, like, final act, it's this act of, like, you know, showman magic, not actual magic, in in a way that's brilliant and, and trickery. And we saw none of that from Willow. We saw none of that sort of inventiveness and cleverness. And instead, and, like, instead we just saw so much from the other characters um, you know, all of them doing awesome things, but yeah, Alora is just supposed to be this great wizard because because that's yeah. What she was Ashley and I were watching a couple and... of the episodes together, and I kept being like, "Oh, that's from the Hobbit." Like that's you know, like there it was so derivative of so many different other stories, and then like at the last episode, it was very Harry Potter. Oh, you know, like excuse it's like, me, oh, when they're doing the the, boy, the girl who lived <laughs> come to die, and then they even had the like red and green energy duel. We were each dying. Other at the end. I'm like seriously. Me and Ken just kept doing. Oh, oh I gotta have a I spec the Patronal man. And we were just... Yeah. It was exactly right. like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I like I kept waiting for there to be that moment of like some, oh, some trick or something. But instead it was just... She's doing that We're both shooting bolts at each other. Body, and then she kept her face. That's like... I was like... Well, she kept doing the look down and then look up. And then when she looks up, you know, she's getting serious. And she's like, <laughs> I'm going to just yeah. sexy you to death. And I was yeah. like, what's happening? <laughs> How does the magic work? Like we spent six episodes of Elora trying to learn magic words and say them right. And then we don't need to say magic words anymore. Graydon can one shot. He's never cast a spell before, but he one shots one of the like most powerful beings on the planet out of the air and it explodes. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like everyone's just finger gunning. The magic at each other from now on. It's just like, yeah. It was like unless, kids unless playing. You're doing it was like, you got me. Dance. No, you didn't. I have a force field. Yeah. You know, yeah. every time Grayson used magic, I was like, wait a minute. What? When did when did we learn that he was? I know. Me too. I'm like, wait, he's going to be Every time. Sure. I was like, wait a minute. I don't think I've been watching this show at all. <laughs> but I will say the number one thing on the list of things I did not need was a nickname for Matt Mardigan. No. He's, He's not, not mad. mad. I'm sorry, guys. No, I never no, want to no. hear it again. That's the worst part of the show. Okay? That's number one <laughs> for me. I do wonder, my, my understanding is that this is a project that people have been kicking around They should around have kicked it around a, a little more. Time. And I, I do, <laughs> well, also true. I, I, I do wonder if there was some version in which, because Val Kilmer's surgery and all that, I think was fairly recent, like the last three or four years. Um... But I wonder if there was some version of which they thought they would be able to have Mad Mardigan, you know, as a like they find him in that final dungeon and Val, Val Kilmer's on yeah. for like half an episode or something like that. 
Um, I don't even his know how they got his voice. Sounds very that similar. Was like oh, his son sounds something a lot we met like to him, say on yeah. the last episode is um, you should go watch Val Kilmer's documentary on. I believe it's Amazon oh, yeah. Prime. Yeah, um, it's yeah. very good. It's about everything mm. he's going through right now. And, you know, it, it's very it's hard to watch, but I think it's very important, if, especially yeah. if you're a fan of him. But his son does a lot of um, voice work for him the voiceover. and he narrates most of the on. thing. It's, 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 oh, that's awesome. That reminds me of something else I wanted oh, to say awesome. last time. And I forgot when we were talking about the dragon, the Ebersisk, is that this is just so funny because if you're a George Lucas, Lucasfilms fan, like, you know, the George Lucas is crazy and he's got a lot of ideas that need to be like brought back. Originally, he wanted that dragon to have 15 heads, and that's what he went to Phil Tippett about. <laughs> and then Phil's like, how about two? <laughs> you know? I love Phil. Yeah. I just thought that was so George Lucas. And, like, I, I have a positive thing about the movie that I'm going to get to. I was trying to jump in with earlier. But just on, on, on that dragon creature, you know, we all poked fun at, like, that the CGI is not great in the original but in that regard, it's charming. Like, it makes it kind of like a fun part of the movie, even though it's because this is the kind of movie that we love and we love to poke fun at. And so when at the very end, they show you like, you know, the hordes of of enemies that the worm has, uh, which I have some thoughts <sighs> as a person who plays Vampire the Masquerade, but that's a whole other story. And we're off the apocalypse. And so there's just a very clearly CGI version of that dragon in the background looking just like a cool dragon. I was like, no, like... Give it to us with the cheesy effects, or don't give it to us. Make make something else. I don't, I don't know why that bothered me, but again, it was just like. And then like they're all leaving, and they're like, "Well, isn't isn't that dragon technically like still down there? Shouldn't we just go kill it right now?" And they're like, "Nah, it'll come for us." Yeah, like, I have too many other things to worry <laughs> about right now. And and how many how many group yeah. shots of them looking away from the camera do we need? I feel like it was like eight <laughs> times per episode. With many love stories. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say I kind of liked Graydon and Alora because the idea that I got from it, uh, first of all, I just found Graydon to be a really charming character. He was one of my favorite characters. Well, uh, I, I didn't love why the whole they did him so dirty. episode that felt very forced. I was excited that they killed him because I right? was like, make it matter. But make it matter. Too. Sorry. Well, and here's the thing is that for me, I thought part of what they were trying to tell a story of is that a lot. You know, Alara never had actual serious feelings for the prince. She had, you know, basically a young girl who's dating a celebrity, like young, could be a person of any gender, but, you know, also just combined with like, you've had your first two dates and some great makeout sessions and some one or two interesting conversations and you're 19 years old and you think that you found the absolute love of your life. And so in my mind, it didn't actually bother me that, that she started to go for Graydon and I thought they had some really nice chemistry and connection. Um... And so I did like that part. Uh, I think where, when though they got to the brother and it was a whole, like, she even says at one point, I think it's Kit asks her, like, did you not marry him because he's possessed or because he's a little naive? Like, and that kind of goes to what you were saying before, Katie, like, on the one hand, her growth could be that she's rejecting the prince who she was with before, who she thought was amazing. And he didn't even remember her name because to him, he, she's just, you know, the girl of the week or the day. Um, and so yeah, I, I liked their story. I liked where it went. If someone has to get, you know, killed off in a romance, I'm really glad it wasn't in the queer romance, but I also was pretty unhappy with where they, where they wound up with it. Cause I thought once they did the whole, like he turns evil thing and then all of a sudden he's a magician and I don't think it was that he turned evil or that it was naive or that he was naive. I think it was that he cut his hair because yeah. he had shaved his beard. awesome yes. hair. Uh, okay. He was he much cuter with the long hair. I, I agree. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's fair, too. And, and they even gave they even harassed him about it. Yeah, when they all did yeah, drugs like, in no. that episode and they played Crimson and Clover terrible <laughs> cover. Yeah, for the kids. Oh, I was like, what is yeah. going on? <laughs> it, like, sorry, I, no, go ahead. Was it just me or did the the cause, so here was my story with the show. I don't know. Like. I watched the first, like you, Katie, I watched the first couple of episodes. I was, was definitely into it, was enjoying it, rolling my eyes at some things, and got to the fourth episode and remembered that I didn't want to binge it all now because, well, actually, no, I got to the fourth episode and that was all there was. And I was like, I want more. 
And then we all started talking and kind of trading about all the things we didn't like. And I was like, oh, yep, that's no, that's true. That's fair. That's fair. And then like I had like a week of not thinking about it. And I went back to start binging the last three episodes uh, last last starting last night and then finishing today. And episode five is really rough. And like, I think it's the worst episode by far. And so coming back to that. Oh, OK. I think that is the Crimson and Clover episode. Um, you know, there's just it. It was just like, oh, and there was a bunch of very anachronistic kind of things that they were saying yeah. in the episode. Uh, it was just rough. And it was just like, I, th- I don't think I had noticed how off the music at the end had been. In part, maybe because I don't think it was happening. It was often happening like in the last few right. moments and then the credits. Crimson yeah, and Clover that, that was episode in yeah. the middle like of the episode. And, and it, it just. Oh, it's done. And yeah. making yeah. Uh, Jade Kale's daughter. Like, we don't Daughter. have to keep doing that. We don't have to. Everybody's related to right. everybody from the first movie. Everybody. Everybody has a weird, dark backstory that we have to keep track of. Right. And Kale, <laughs> General Kale, who in the movie is admittedly not super flesh. He's mysterious. He's the Boba Fett of the Perfect. first movie. But then, <laughs> thank you. I, I just came up with that. It did, I think it is pretty good. <laughs> But he's like he's like this brilliant general. He's like the super badass. And then it's like he's the first of these friggin' bone barbarian guys. Why? Why? Where? How does that make and sense? And if he was the first, he I mean he he died pretty quickly. So in in the service of the queen. Yeah. So when did he have time to go start this bone brigade? I don't know. Yeah. I guess every town that he went to looking for that baby, he was making his own babies. If you Nobody know. got babies. turned into an animal. <laughs> Nobody got turned into pigs. There was no talking I know. That's creatures. what I think that's what bombed me out the most. Yeah. The magic wasn't cool. It wasn't like no. in the in the movie, like with Willow really struggling and he was just so likable and innocent and you really were rooting for him. And it just, it just didn't yeah. have that. And like, just to not, I don't want to harp too much on the great and the Laura thing, but like, there's a way they could have done that. Maybe that I would have liked it. But the fact that he was seemingly mm-hmm. in love with her right away bothered me. Like, what if they had just really become friends? He's an unlikely People never get to just be friends in shows anymore. And that's what I would have liked to see. In right. This. Like, I, their friendships friends. are great. And maybe they could have hinted at a possible like romance later, but it, there's no yeah. nuance. There's no subtlety. It's like, oh, you're amazing. And she's like, oh, uh, yeah, that's weird because like we're going to save my boyfriend, you know, like and then the whole time I just felt awkward about it. Like he was just this love struck puppy that she had no interest in. And then all of a sudden you're like, mm-hmm. does she? They have no yeah. chemistry. Like they could yeah. have made that like a fun <laughs> friendship that could have been making you go mm, maybe but they just there's no subtlety yeah i i didn't see it from yeah. alora's side until willow was like you have to use your conflicted emotions <laughs> about graydon you have to embrace that or you're never going to become a, a, a sorceress it's like I, Continue oh. right and then they're like okay. yeah he's powerful because he's got angst the yeah. supreme power of angst yeah. <laughs> and his backstory was just too much like we had like Make him a simple character. He doesn't have the bat. I'm possessed. I killed my brother, and then I'm possessed again. And then you got to get it. I'm like, wait a minute. Just have him be possessed by the demon. That was fine. Yeah. Yeah. The back, especially where I was going before when I talked about them being like with Alora having her like you know obsessiony feelings for for the prince. You know, he also was in. They were both in a similar situation of being like pledged to people who they really weren't actually that interested in. He mean more so with his forced marriage. You kind of have talked me out of liking it. Like I, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, it's fine. I, mean, I know. I, I'm sorry. Don't do that. You stick to your guns. Well, Matthew. even he, the second he met the crone as as chick from uh, in her gown from David Bridal's oh my God. You know, prom queen section. Yes. Or the what the heck was that? I have no idea. That was a prom dress from 1997. Yeah. It had the lace with the things on it and the pleats in the front. I feel but like within. To be honest, I feel like I'd wear that. I'd wear it too. I like that I'm dress. I thought it was Willow. But it, yeah, it doesn't fit. He, cut but I would wear it. With the, the evil fantasy dress. Here, here's what I think happened there. And I'll say, yeah, I, it's not that you, I, I still like the idea of the two of them, but I think I agree with you, Katie. It could have been much better done. Agree with everybody there. I think what Katie said about the writers also happened with the costuming. Because every dot, about 90% of the costuming budget went to 
putting Kit in this incredibly badass set of armor that goes on her Iron Man style, which makes yeah. no sense for the technology of the day, but sure, it's magic, whatever. It looked amazing. And every time someone it was did that, really I cool, they died. but I also kind of felt like that was anticlimactic because they built this thing up this whole time and then like, oh yeah, it's it looks real cool. Oh. It's Iron it's Man. A suit of armor. Armor. Yeah, and, like, okay. protective... and she gets to be the one too. Now we have two number ones, yes. and that's all she ever wanted. And I was like, oh, everybody gets a trophy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. The most protective armor in the world doesn't have a helmet. <laughs> it doesn't need a helmet, Mark. It's like it's in, the helmet is invisible. Why does it need anything then? <laughs> look, all I'm gonna say is the look that Jade gives her is so perfect when she's in that like because she looks damn good i do like them i think they're i would it's watch a i would read a fanfic about them i would mm -hmm. watch like a little <laughs> you know short film about them i thought their chemistry was great and i i really like that actress who plays kid i think she's funny i think her timing is good mm -hmm. i could see her doing really well in the future of her career i could not see past the highlights <laughs> i didn't even see i didn't even notice yeah. them until you told me oh my me. god so let's, can I take two seconds, the hair? Everyone had highlights. Alora Dannon was just like, I have one streak of red. And then in the next episode, her entire hair was red. Yeah. I guess I was it was like, the magic have, turned you her hair You could back have red. done it over eight episodes is slowly change it, not one lock and then be like, surprise. And and I no one acknowledged it. it. I hated it. Like, I was wondering, yeah. like, not one person. I know. Person. Her boyfriend's like, surprise. oh, I like your hair. <laughs> you know? Like, come on. I, I wondered if I had forgotten. I wish she was like, I like it blonde. Because it, it's funny how, like, because there's so much being thrown at you, a lot of which doesn't make sense. I totally forgot until we just talked about it now that they had made a big deal about that suit of armor. I thought it totally came out of nowhere. <laughs> um, which oh, made yeah. See, you just, there's just too many things to focus Boros on. Boros kept stabbing himself. That's what Mad Mardigan was after. They were like, oh, there was some fighting right. between right. Christian Slater and Borman. And mm -hmm. I kind of wish Christian Slater would have hung out for a little while. Yeah. Because he's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, his, but that was like bringing my ultimate fantasy men together because at that time I was in love with Mad Mardigan and I was in love with Robin Hood's little me brother because too. he was so hot me in Robin too. Hood. You know what I think God, about? Will, Will, right? Will Scarlet. Yeah, yeah Will, remember Will Scarlet. Remember when, uh. when um, Kevin Costner like flies in the catapult or whatever and he's like, F me, he cleared it. He, he, yeah. he was just, I'm like, oh so my cute. God, he's such You're a bad brother. boy. I was like, I want him to be my boyfriend. <laughs> Actually, I got to say, I am deeply surprised because as someone who ran with a lot of goth type people, uh, was, was m myself and- Heathers. Yeah, that's, I 100% thought like, <laughs> wait, Heathers isn't what you think of Christian Slater is? Because that's the one where all the women of my generation uh, and some of the boys. Uh, I'm cups. a nerd. I'm also a nerd. So I will take them at their gothy, but I will take the pumpkin pants and cod piece as well. That's fair. I will that's not fair. kick that out of bed. That's fair. I, I was very happy to see Christian Slater as well. I was also very obsessed with him as a child. I remember renting the movie <laughs> Cuffs uh, from Blockbuster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that he was like, I talked in the in the movie episode about how cool the names were, and his name was Allagash. Like that that it's like a. I just kept thinking of like the beer. A, yeah, it's a brewery that's named after like a Native American word. Like, why is this guy named Allagash? Like, that's just I don't know. I mean, if we want to talk, somebody was drunk on white ale that day, and uh... if we want to talk about names, can we mention the fact that we have all these gorgeous, very like Welsh, Elven kind of old English kind of sounding place names? And then one of the areas that there's great conflict over is just called Kashmir, which it's spelled a little different and it's pronounced a little bit different, but it basically sounds Kashmir. exactly like the region that India and Pakistan have been fighting over for the last 50 years. I know. That was so bizarre, too. Was so weird. Yeah. Uh, Back to Christian Slater, though, like, what do you mean he was locked in that cage for 20 years? I know. That didn't make sense at all. Oh, yeah, like so either. you're capturing people to turn them into this goo that you need to just to, hang out to continue to be eloquent trolls, but why would you keep him then? Yeah. Just him for twenty years. Totally fine, healthy Yeah, and he did not look bed. like emaciated and underfed. Yeah. He ate. Yeah, those <laughs> trolls were so I like I remember when like they showed they teased the trolls in the one episode before they came out and saw you saw them full blown in the in the next episode. I was like, Oh, the trolls have like armor and weapons and stuff i was like eh all right i guess they're they're smart trolls whatever 
fine. They're different trolls. These are like gray trolls as opposed to the black trolls. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then they came out, yeah, with the clipboard. It was like, oh, hi, guys. Yes, no, we were. I was like, what the hell is this? This is silly. I was like, Katie, I am going to flip. I this know. Table. You know what it reminded me of is at the end of Spaceballs when they do that Planet of the Apes spoof and uh, yes. they're on the beach and he's like, oh no, it's Spaceballs. There goes the neighborhood <laughs> or whatever it is. Like, that's exactly it's, what I thought of with that was. Guy. Just in terms of the pacing of a show. Like I said, I would like it a lot more if it wasn't Willow Connected. I still wouldn't love it. Um, like, they have two episodes in which our heroes get captured and, like, held as prisoners for a while. And they were back to back. And it just felt yeah. like that of the pacing of a show, <laughs> doing that twice in a row and both times having it be, like, kind of comedic people who are doing it. Can we talk about the round robin Back to back with Kit and Alora in the last episode, where they're like, "You want to take this one? Yeah." And they keep turning around. You know, talk about yeah. yeah. Nobody would walk into anywhere like that. You don't need to guard her back. There's like a zillion bad guys. Just mm-hmm. turn around and talk to your brother at the same time. Like that was so you take stupid. this one. And going back to what um uh, uh going back to what Ashley was saying about like how Kit had to be again her own version of the chosen one. As much as I loved her in the armor and I was like, I watched Jade look at her and I was like, okay, that's an instant meme. That's awesome. Glad again, we need, you know, Gen Z queer representation. Got it. Part of what the story had told us is that Jade is the better fighter and that Jade is the one who has been holding back the whole time in order to protect because the queen had told her not to. So shouldn't have been Jade who wins that great badass fight in part because the whole point is that like... Like, Kit has promised to protect Alora, and Jade has promised to protect Kit. And so, like... Yeah, I thought about that, too. I loved watching like, it, but I was like, why is this What was Jade? the point of her not being as good if then at the end, Jade's just, like, watching? She needed her trophy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, um... So, right, when, when Kit was having all these, like, doubts and whatever, um her father's voice came to her and was like, you have always been, you're better than me. You've always been everything. And where the, where the, where the bleep was that voice when his son was getting seduced by the crone? No, He doesn't like, care about Eric. I guess not. Maybe there's oh, another angsty movie with like Med Mardigan and Eric and they like have a falling out and somehow... Like, we figure out what their backstory was. But yeah, that makes zero sense, too. Yeah. Yeah. And And then the fact that Kit and Alora had that long, drawn-out conversation in this room that's, like, lava-ish. I'm like, get out of there. (laughs) What are you doing? Stop it. um, Oh, sorry. I was going to say. No, I'm done. I'm trying to think of some good things, well, guys. I'm we just... should do our three. Yes, I was soon. saying we need to so spend have, I need either to go three last, things really or you have to, to say good it. things for like 30 seconds. I, I want to say good things. Okay. I've said some before and I want to do that. The, the three things we can all say are two or one in Ashley's case. Um, but let me just rag on it in one more way because I, I agree. Two of the themes that I thought they set up that could have been so interesting and then they just dropped into cliche land. One is this idea of... Because you have it with both Willow and Med Mardigan of what does it do to your family when you feel this need to go off on all these great adventures, you know? And, like, the idea oh, yeah. of Kit feeling left behind and of a Willow feeling like he's left his daughter behind and that, as he said, like, it's just a throwaway line. But, you know, apparently his wife died because he wasn't there to, to help fight for her when he was off on an adventure and then his son left because of that. Like, we got that as a throwaway line. That's such a great mirror to, to Kit's feelings. And, and the son's yeah. feelings, we got none of that. And then, again, for me, the name The Worm conjures up the kind of villainous force of nature of the Werewolf the Apocalypse and Vampire the Masquerade role-playing games, where in some of those later books, they actually made it a lot more, like, it's not evil, it's just the force of, like, death and decay and, and breaking things down so they can then later be rebuilt. And there's all this great philosophical stuff about it. And... So when they told us, like, no, 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 the worm has a point, I was ready for them to be like, I wanted them to somewhat convince me that maybe there was a reason to back the worm, you know, like to be like, I wanted to understand why our characters were tempted by it. And instead, it was just such classic, like, oh, you cannot have to deal with stuff. The brother is clearly an idiot. That's like, it was just, 
they had so much potential and it was so dull. Yeah, I think that that goes uh, to like the villains in general. You know, mm -hmm. like in in the in the movie, we start off with Bavmorda, Sorsha, and Kale, and we're introduced to these characters, and they're cool and they're dynamic, and we like the whole thing is like with Bavmorda, but then like and we know she wants the kid, she wants to kill the kid because the kid's the only one who can uh, you know bring her down. What? And the, well, you know, in the first episode, we we're introduced to the Gales who are like cool and creepy. And oh, man, these are wow. These are really cool bad guys. Does anyone remember any of their names or like what nope. the point of them was? No. Nope. And what is the, the OK? The crone is working for the worm. They also want a Laura. What does the worm well, want? Yeah, I, guess and to like, take, I don't know. Like if a Laura is in danger. She goes on this quest even though she probably should stay home locked in a bunker to save her from the crone, but she goes to be with Eric and then she dumps him. So like, you probably should have just stayed home, girl. Like, right? what's yeah. the point? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. All right. So as, as you all were suggesting, let's, let's talk about some positives. We can then go back to yes. ragging on it or start wrapping this up. Either way is fine. Um, but let me just, let me, um, I've I've said some things. I definitely can come up with more. But Katie, let me start with you. So, what are what are three of the positive things from the show about for you? Wow. Okay, and I terrible. might be repeating myself a little bit, but <laughs> Borman hot. Yes, like he um, was really hot. Sexy. He's not your typical like, I guess like sex symbol. You don't see a lot of like characters like that. But he's because he, he's kind of. Well, I guess you kind of do. Like, he's a bad boy. Like, girls like bad boys. But he's good looking. We don't we don't see a lot of characters that are fit, that physically look like him. Mm -hmm. I think he's very sexy. And I think he's a good actor. I had not seen him in anything before. Um, I enjoyed his character. And I would like to see more from him. Maybe with a little more depth going forward. But yes, I like him. <laughs> um, I think that the actors in general are charismatic. And fun. I think they did a good job with what they had to work with. And I think that's part of what drew me in in the beginning. Because for me, characters and character development is like the biggest, I guess, thing. And so I enjoyed watching them until I really felt like the story degraded. But I, I, I thought I thought they were they're charismatic and they kind of helped carry an otherwise, you know, bad story. Um, and then I guess the other thing that I really did like was that they, they did pepper in things that were nostalgic from me. Like, I know they were few and far between, like with the music, but you know, they got in the snowball, like reference at the end and like the episode four, I thought it had a lot of fun nostalgia. I enjoyed watching that one. There was a lot of flashbacky type stuff. Um, so I was able to enjoy i guess some of the memories that some of the episodes brought up and i loved seeing sorsha i still think she's hot mm -hmm. gorgeous gorgeous yeah i would definitely echo for me the first really positive thing i would talk about is borman um because yeah i love a bad boy too and i thought he was kind of a fun new take on the bad boy um a just because you know as a man of color uh that was great to see um he's I don't know where this comes from, but I, there's a term that I've heard used to describe Lando Calrissian as sexually omnivorous. You know, that he's just a happy to have a little bit of everything. And that was Borman to a T, you know? and he, Yeah, I liked <laughs> that too. He flirts with everyone, you know, with Graydon and Alora. He's like, right, you all want to make out? Like, he doesn't care which one. Um, he's <laughs> not the like, I need to be in control of everything. When he's flirting with the the bone lady, the head of the, the that group... You know, she says, tie him up. And he's like, this sounds like fun. You know, he doesn't need to be in control. Like, and he was just, he, he provided some of that levity. He, he was not as good as Mad Mardigan, but like he, he played that role well. And I thought that fit in well. Um, I've talked a lot it, about this. Yeah. It also made me really realize like it's all teens. And then you have this grown up, you know, yeah. and you're like, okay. It's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. One adult and the rest of well, the Well, and, and, and obviously Warwick, but like we already knew him. Which. Now that you say that, I don't love as much as offer to make out with two of them, but still, you know. Yeah, right. Moving okay. on. Yeah, I true. bet if we looked it up, they're in their 20s. Yeah, I, I think it's the fair. actors are, but I, I think the characters are supposed to be yeah. 18. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but then maybe he's supposed to be 19. What's the What's the age of consent in Tears Lane? 
Zero. I think they're supposed to be like 17, 18 around then. Ashley. Um, what? <laughs> it's just like Ohio. No, I'm just kidding. Hey. There is one place in America that one of the states that it is like you can marry somebody I think it's at whatever age as long as the parents. Oh, it's, I knew it was one of the O's. Yeah. Um, second, I, I've talked a lot about the queer romance and how good I thought it was. One thing I think, though, that's worth mentioning about that is that you rarely see that in fantasy, especially with two women. And when you do, one of them is generally very femme coded. Like generally it is like one of them is kind of the one who wants to be a soldier. And the other one is like the princess, like kind of a Sansa Stark kind of a princess. And so having it be two women knights, like just just two women knights, whatever their sexuality, but having them be into each other and like... At least on my part of TikTok, the idea of like sword fight as flirtation has become a big thing. And so watching that among the two of them was really fun. And yeah, I liked that too. That's always been a thing right? and has not started on TikTok. I, I'm sure, but <laughs> I just it's have to bring it back for the 80s. Yeah, fair enough. Sword fight movies. Um, but no, you're right. It's like they're both strong fighters. There's not a lot of like skin showing or anything like that they're not wearing makeup you know and they're both super sexy and uh, their relationship is is fun to watch yeah did that did anybody else get thrown that uh you thought at the beginning that jade was a laura dunnan i did yeah. yes i wondered about that yeah i yes, think that was I a did. red i was just pairing. like i don't remember how like yeah <laughs> that's oh shit. yep Right. And, and I would say I, I also just love Jade, especially because I love that actress because she was the one who played the leader of the uh, Flag Smashers in Falcon Winter Soldier, who I thought uh, yeah. had been a brilliant character yeah. and had been totally let down by the end of that series. And so getting to see her again, I was just like, okay, this is cool because I, I think I agree uh, with what you were saying, Katie. I thought all the acting, not all the acting choices or directorial choices, were ones I agreed with, but I thought all the actors were doing a good job. Um, they were doing what they could with the terrible. Yeah, they, they were, were charismatic and fun to watch. And like as an ensemble. Yeah. Like it could have been it, that it could have been real cool. Yeah. And that's why I can say, like, I think if this hadn't had the name Willow on it and it just been like set in its own world and its own thing where they were going to play with dialogue. I'm not going to go it. that far, Matthew. I'm well, not that's go fair. That far. That, you don't have to go that far. <laughs> I'm not saying I would love it. I'm saying I would watch it once and enjoy it and probably not go if back. If it was called Riverdale I watch that. and I, I knew what I was going that. into. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Willowdale. <laughs> Willowdale. There you go. There you go. Willowdale. It, Thursdays at 7 on the CW. Yeah, no, I mean, look, you, you mentioned this. Coming you know, up you, next week on the WB. I, I am currently <laughs> binging Vampire Diaries because I love me some CW Oof. stuff, okay? Are you watching? <laughs> did you watch Riverdale? I watched the first season. Of that For some reason, that one that one felt so tame compared to like Gossip Girl and Vampire Diaries and stuff like oh, that. Oh, no, you got to keep watching. Okay, okay. Yeah, trust me. Arch by episode three, Archie is in jail running a underground boxing ring trying to get everybody off of drugs. What? It gets really crazy. Okay. I'll get yeah. season two yeah. I remember that in the comics. Uh, all right, <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, can you find something that you liked about the show? I liked the fight sequence in the first episode, I think, when they took um, Eric. I thought that was really cool. And I thought that how dare they didn't misdirect me that the rest wasn't going to be that cool. Um, Cause I thought the monster's makeup was really good too. Like uh, the guy that looked like the mouth of Sauron, he was great. I really liked seeing Knockmore castle. I mean, the whole episode wasn't great, but just the castle was great. I was like, I know that castle and kale and stuff being in there. So that was fun. So was that episode four? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I liked Zombie Mim. <laughs> oh, yeah. You yeah, did it, Ashley. Like... You thought of three things. Yes, I did it. Cool. I did it. Congrats. I like it. Mark? Um, you know, I, I also really liked the fact that there was, you know, that there was inclusivity and um representation in the show I, I i also loved the you know the romance between kit and jade and um i loved that it. it just it wasn't all white people um and yeah i like those things too just to throw that yeah, out there i'm you didn't sorry say it. I don't, oh you shit didn't yeah say sorry it. ashley like i'm sorry player. i was going with actual th yeah. you went with zombie uh, no. zombie men's it's fine yeah <laughs> No, no, I, I considered not saying that just or having that not count because it's already been said. But 
uh, I think there's going to be some repetition here in what we liked. Um, but yeah, to build off what you said, Ashley, the the nostalgia, the the fan service, mm-hmm. uh, some of the fan service I really liked. You know, seeing Sorsha with her sword and and seeing Nakmar Castle. Um, when when the fan service was good, it was good. Uh, when it was bad, it was bad. Um, sometimes it kind of just felt like here, here, millennial. Here you go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> here you go. Here you go. We're Keep so paying pathetic. attention. We just can't. Uh, I was like, oh, this show was not made for me. It was uh, made for them. <laughs> and and I really thought that the shattered sea was a cool thing. That was yeah. a cool. Thing, until of, until the waterfall. Uh, yeah. Of, yes, yeah. Oh, I turned to my husband and I go, "It's you." <laughs> I liked I liked the that that was like a practical thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. The mud mander or whatever it was. Yeah, that was really cute. I liked Graydon's connection with that that thing. I liked the world yeah. building, and this was much more in the first couple episodes. But the, I I appreciated the world building. Like I felt we were getting to have more of the world explored. I think then I got very frustrated towards the end because we didn't, it didn't feel like yeah. it got paid off in good ways, but. Yeah. Cause, cause nothing mattered until like Graydon died. I was like, oh good. We're going to get a death that matters. Like, and it made her discover her power and all of that makes sense. Right. But then well, like, I was still thinking in that moment, like, oh, they have no idea what to do with him now. So let's just kill him. Yeah. Let's just kill him. They, but they like up until that point, like yeah. all, people had been dying, like, you know. Uh, Christian Slater conceivably was hacked to pieces by those trolls. But we and didn't everyone see was just it. like, Bye. Now I don't know. But yeah. what we did see in the f- second episode was the old man who was like, I raised Eric from the time he was a baby. He's the closest I thing I have more. to a son. I will go with you. And then eight minutes later, he gets an arrow to the sternum from a bone warrior. And everyone's just like, Let's get out of here and crack jokes <laughs> while we run away. They never, they never talk about it again. They don't give Alora that horse that nobody's using. I could yeah, just like, go nobody was like, hey, what happened to that guy? That's the details. Bad. Yeah, I had utterly forgotten about that guy because again, I watched <laughs> the first couple of episodes. So, well, and like, it's not like I you can be forgiven for that since the characters well, like, didn't even remember it. Not for anything, but his wound didn't even look that bad. Like, I feel like they could have saved him, too. Like, the the post credit scene was him like, oh, please, come back. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. <laughs> I'm not dead. I'd have some internal bleeding if you take me back to Tira's Lane. I'm sure I'll be fine. No, okay. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're going to start wrapping up the regular part of the show. Uh, for the patrons, we're going to have a final section where we discuss, like, how we might have made this show if we could have uh, uh, done it in a different way. Um, but I want you to, uh, for our regular listeners, give everyone like kind of what's your last word, one, one last thing you want to say about the show. Ashley, you want to start? I'm disgusted that there's going to be two more seasons. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I, I will leave an open door for you if we cover them, but you will by no means be obligated to watch them. I don't think people will really want me to be on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let the listeners decide. Mark? <laughs> My final word on the show is it was not great, um, but it could have been. It came so close. Like, I, there's so many things that have just, just could have been fixed with, like, two lines of dialogue or, for instance, when Kit found Mad Mardigan's sword. And it's like, oh, what an awesome, cool moment. And then... The sword is completely not dull. It's like the edges are flat. It's like it's like a clearly like a prop sword. It's a prop sword. There's no edge on the blade. And I was just like, who's the prop master that let that happen? But like, and I don't mean to harp on like one particular thing, but there was just all these like little things Mm -hmm. that just could have been better. And zippers. If they want to bring me in, just bring all four of us in for the second season. Just be like, guys, no. No, do not put a Nirvana song mm-hmm. in this episode. Oh, yeah. I'm available. Katie? Mm-hmm. I would like to talk about the relationship between Willow and Alora. Yeah. In the original movie, she's obviously a baby, but they have this innate, intuitive connection to each other such that a magical fairy 
brings the baby back to Willow, even when he gives her to a daikini. And then they go through this whole journey, and she's still just a baby, but she loves Willow. They have this beautiful connection. So then, when you're like, hey, I wonder what would happen later in life with them. I just think there was so much beauty that could have been done with this. Like maybe so, the somewhere that innate connection still exists, mm. but now she's a teen and he's been gone for a long time. And so he's battling with maybe the relationship not being what he hoped it would be. I didn't want to see him being so mean to her. I wanted mm -hmm. something different. I wanted to feel sad and happy and confused as they were working out their relationship. But I also wanted there to just be this innate thing and it wasn't there. And I, I, I wish most of all out of everything that like that would have been done differently. Yeah. I think, and we'll talk about that more in the Patreon section. Um, and I'll just close by saying, uh, I again, like I said, I, I did some research into this. I kind of looked up on like different social media, what people were saying about the movie. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 51% liked score. Um, and so, like, half the fans liked it, half the fans didn't. And there's a lot of people who are gung ho, absolutely in love with the show. And at first, I was, I was kind of surprised. And then I realized all of them are Gen Z, um, you know, and that any of the content I found that was critical of it was almost all people who were like, you know, 35 and up. Um, and, and I really think that that's... Same. I, I don't want to speak, uh, you know, for everybody by any means, but I... Ken didn't like it and he's 33. Uh, okay, well, still pretty yes, far from Gen Z. Also, Ken lives with a very jaded, very cynical older woman. Yes. So he's affected by that. Also true, he's affected. also true. Um <laughs> There's so many comments. Boom, boom, I love um, you. Um, yeah, so, and like, <laughs> I, I think that kind of speaks to what you were saying, Ashley. Like, it, it may well be that someone described it as like this is it's a Disney YA show, and it's aimed for a much younger audience. And you know, that's kind of how I felt about the prequels. I remember in Star Wars World, and I've come to appreciate a lot of part of those. I don't think I'm going to do that with this show. Um, oh, how about that? She was wearing Ray Skywalker's outfit by the end of it. I was like, we were making jokes about that too. They're like, my new name is Melora Dannon. It's Ray Scott. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, I just thought it was interesting that it does seem like there's a fairly big generational divide. And so certainly in terms of listeners, uh, if you love the show, would love to hear from you about it. Uh, you can find all the ways to contact us by going to theethicalpanda.com. Uh, you can also find our Patreon. Uh, if you should go to Patreon and look for The Ethical Panda, then, uh, it will also be in the show notes. That way you get to help support the show, all the great things we're trying to do. Uh, it's a labor of love, but it does uh, cost some money and some effort and time. Would love to have a little bit of your support. You'll get all the great bonus content we're doing uh, and other great things like that. So please check all the, those things out. Uh, all that will be in the show notes. But most importantly, we've had three great guests here, all of whom are doing great content that you should check out as well. So, uh, Mark, since you just threw your hands up in the air like uh -huh. you do care, why don't you start with uh, where can people find you? Uh, well, you can find me on the Cast Eye Podcast, um, at Cast Eye Podcast, uh, where I, where I uh, dungeon master and, and do and play, uh, different tabletop role playing games. Uh, you can find me on the Aether Log, um, Aether Log? I forget. Aether Log. <laughs> Aether. Aether Log. Um, wow. Maybe cut that. Uh, Aether Log. <laughs> you can find me on the Aether Log. This isn't live. You can just do it again. Okay, good. You can find me on the Ether Log, um, another uh, actual play podcast, and you can also look for audiobooks that I have narrated. And please buy the ones, buy all of them, but especially buy two copies of the ones that I get profit share on. There you go. There you go. We will have uh, links to all these things in the show notes, which means Mark now has just sent me a lot of links. Katie, yes. what about yourself? You can find me at my house at 127 West. <laughs> no, 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 Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, I'm on Twitter <laughs> at Katie O Lady. And uh, you can also find me on the Cast Eye Podcast. And I do another YouTube actual play, various different uh, TTRPGs, Carrie Smith on YouTube. And um, it's also called Crossroads Games. Um and I think that's it. You can also find me at Ashley's house sometimes. 
um, and <laughs> just maybe hopefully on here again. <laughs> awesome, definitely. Uh, and Ashley, what uh, was up with a supreme leader of the Stranded pa- Panda Podcast Network? Oh, you can always find me at the MCU cast. We are getting ready to start on a, a big feat of rewatching all of the Infinity Saga wow. from release order from the beginning to do a different kind of perspective on mm-hmm. what we get from these movies now uh, versus when we saw them the first time. Uh, you can get me talking about things I love on Bill and Ashley's Terror Theater podcast, which me and my co-host, Bill Bria, break down horror movies all the way from A to Z. And, uh, you know, you'll find me around. You know, we got Mando coming up. We got some stuff. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We'll definitely be talking to you about getting you back on for Mando coverage. Um, when you asked me about shows this year, I was like, I don't I don't even know. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute, Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. we, <laughs> we got to have some Pedro Pascal love. Um, anyway, thank you all so much uh, to all my listeners. If you're not sticking around for the bonus content, thank you as much for being listeners. I would love for you to become patrons. But even if you don't want to do that, there's so many other great ways you can support the show. Give us a five star review on whatever kind of podcast uh, user thing you use or just share it with a friend. Uh, we love these conversations. Do you, have you been talking to people about Willow? You want to bring them into the conversation, whether you loved it, whether you hate it. Send us feedback. Send us thoughts. Send this to a friend. Uh, it's one of the best ways to help support us and help the network grow and just help keep the conversation going. So I'm having myself, all my great guests. Thank you all so much for listening and have a great day. Bye. 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 Bye.